Those donations may explain why SBF is not in custody somewhere. Normally, you would see somebody arrested pretty quickly with this kind of fact pattern. So the question is, why hasn't Sam been detained by American authorities? We had a very assertive FBI doing all kinds of things to American citizens for things that most people say are nowhere near as serious. And so the, the treatment looks like it's a two-tiered justice system to a lot of people. With the close collaboration that's been going on with FTX and the Securities and Exchange Commission, people are saying, how could the SEC be doing all that and not know? They should definitely have been able to look at their balance sheet. It's hard to believe at this point somebody doesn't go to jail, and we need to look at a major overhaul of the Securities and Exchange Commission. Good evening. Welcome to NTD's Fresh Look America. I'm Paul Graney. Today we're joined by Congressman Warren Davidson, representing Ohio's 8th District. Davidson sits in the House Financial Services Committee. He's also the founder of the Sound Money Caucus. Congressman, it's always good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, always an honor. Thank you. Oh, and congratulations on securing another two years. Yeah, it's uh, definitely an honor. Thanks to the good people of Southwest Ohio for giving me another shot. Congressman, let's start with FTX, the bankrupt crypto exchange. I know you're familiar with this space. We see the founder, Sam Bankman-Fried, is heavily aligned with Democrats, it seems. How do you see this situation and how do you see it playing out? Well, I think the political donations are an interesting side story. I mean, he, he's given to, you know, overwhelmingly to Democrats. He's given to some Republicans. But frankly, some of the other people in FTX have given to Republicans primarily. So when you look at what's going on with, um, with FTX, I think the bigger story is, why is this happening? And, you know, one narrative is for sure, this looks like fraud. I mean, if you saw the Wall Street Journal article uh, from the acting CEO came in after having restructured Enron and a whole career of bankruptcy restructuring saying, I've never seen anything this bad. It's, you know, just unbelievable, the lack of controls, poor governance, uh, back doors created in software to bypass uh, accounting controls. Um, those look a lot like the narrative of fraud. And, you know, normally you would see somebody arrested pretty quickly with this kind of fact pattern. Uh, so, you know, the question is, why hasn't Sam uh, been detained by American authorities? And, of course, he was initially in the Bahamas. Uh, last I heard, that's where he was. Um, and that's where FTX International is headquartered. So this whole thing started unwinding uh, with the international piece. And, of course, he had tweeted about uh, FTX uh, U.S., being firewalled and safe, uh, and obviously that turned out not to be the case. So a lot of people are getting hurt badly by this, um, and you know fraud is hard to detect up front. Uh, but with the close collaboration that's been going on with FTX and the Securities and Exchange Commission, people are saying, how could the SEC be doing all that and not know? Uh, and so you know I think this is going to be a really interesting thing. The Financial Services Committee has announced that we're going to do a hearing in December. So I look forward to that hearing. On this collaboration, uh, as you mentioned, I wonder, have you spoken with Minnesota Rep Tom Emmer? He, he said that the SEC chair was perhaps coordinating with FTX to, quote, obtain regulatory monopoly. Have you spoken with M Mr. Emmer about this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tom Emmer and I sit on the committee together. He was just recently elected uh, to be the whip, so he'll be the person in charge of rounding up the votes in our narrow majority uh, as we take over the House January 3rd. Um, but, you know, he's been real active in the same space, uh, and, you know, I think he and I see the potential for this. I haven't said definitely Gary Gensler has done this, uh, but it seems to say, look, um, Gensler and, uh, you know, SBF uh, have M MIT ties and some other relationship ties. But fundamentally, Gary Gensler and Jay Clayton had the same kind of narrative. If you want to do anything in the crypto space in the U.S., you need to, <clears throat> excuse me, you need to come into uh, the SEC and work out a deal. Well, uh, FTX has been working with regulators at the SEC and the CFTC, the Commodity Futures uh, Trading Commission, to try to get some sort of regulatory framework for exchanges in the U.S. And, you know, presumably they've shared a lot of data about how these trades are done, what they're trading on their platform. FTX had a Series C funding round in January, and, you know, a lot of companies uh, took a pass, and some companies 
put put big uh, investments into FTX just as recently as last January, January of 2022. And, and if you look at the market, um, crypto in general has trended down since then. So some people are speculating, you know, the biggest players got to look at the books in this Series C funding and said, wow, uh, I want nothing to do to this. And the market started tanking. Uh, and others, you know, counted on it actually working out. Obviously, it hasn't worked out. Uh, I believe it's not just big investors in Canada with the Ontario Teachers Pension Fund lost hundreds of billions of dollars, what they were doing investing in FTX. I'm not sure, but that's what they've done. Um, th I believe as well the CFTC had some um, former, former members of the CFTC were sitting on the board of FTX as well, which is incredible. Is it possible congressmen to sit on a board of a company and not know that this level of malfeasance and fraud was happening? Hey, can you explain this to us? Yeah, I think at, at face value, it is, is uh, you know, we're just as incredulous as uh, the average American. Like, how how could this um, level of governance attract this kind of funding? You know, as members of Congress, we're not doing due diligence to make investments into these companies generally. You know, we're trying to regulate the space. And if you go back to, um, twenty since 2018, Darren Soto, a Democrat from Orlando and I, have had a, a bill, the Token Taxonomy Act, that deals with the root issue here, which is what is a security and what is not. And, and part of what's happened here is they've existed in this space that's somewhere between the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. No one's really taken ownership over really being the regulator here. So in a way, it's, it's kind of designed to be able to be one of these point this way, uh, you know, they were supposed to, we thought, and um, in the absence of regulatory clarity in America, why is FTX International based in the Bahamas? Because Bahamas passed a set of laws to provide you know, legal clarity for this space. So FTX International headquartered in the Bahamas. If we had regulatory clarity in the United States, you, know, you would like to think that a lot of the liquidity that is offshore would actually be in our markets. Are you saying, Congressman, back to, to your point on the SEC and the CFTC, that perhaps, or, or what you would like to know is, was there some cooperation or coordination to, uh, why would the SEC and the CFTC work with a company like FTX in, in general? Well, so if you go back, um, you know, um, I don't know, six months ago or so, Tom Emmer and I led a letter. We had, you know, four Republicans, four Democrats, uh, and basically sent a note to the uh, Securities and Exchange Commission. You're engaging in endless discovery with these companies, um, whether it's Coinbase or FTX or any number of other companies in the space. They've come to us saying, yeah, the SEC's basically got staff camped out. They look at every single thing that we do, all of our trades, all of our deals, all the tokens that we're trading, why we're trading them, how do we do know your customer, all the things that you would think, they're like, they're in our shorts every day, uh, but they never provide a way out. They just keep doing discovery, discovery, discovery. And you're like, uh, so we sent that letter and frankly, the SEC uh, shot back and you know basically accused us of being the blockchain eight uh, of, of somehow supporting the industry uh, and interfering with their ability to regulate. And no, we're just saying you should provide the clarity. They never have provided the bright line clarity so that um, the investors and the innovators know where the boundaries are. And frankly, so do the regulators. Um, but this is also on Congress. We, as I say, you know, we've tried to get a bill since 2018 to provide this. We've never even had notice on any of the bills. We haven't marked up a bill uh, and we haven't moved a bill. You know, so in the House, uh, you know, we've worked in our committee. In the Senate, Senator Lummis and others have worked on their uh, Senate Banking Committee to try to provide clarity. And the industry just desperately needs this. And, you know, unfortunately, the tendency when you have something bad like this happen is to overreact. And we don't want to kill this market. What we do want to find is a way to flush out the bad actors. The good actors have been pleading for regulation so that you can see. I mean, some of these things are clearly pump and dump uh, scams. And I had this line of questioning with, uh, the, you know, the, you know, my, I guess, assistant, you know, vice somebody for regulation uh, at, at the SEC, Grawal. 
and uh, in July. And it's like, do you guys give selective enforcement? He said, no. Well, at this point, it's hard to believe that they haven't been engaged in selective enforcement.